Here are some highlights from Mark Yusko speaking at BlockWorks Digital Asset Summit. He's the founder and chief investment officer and managing director of Morgan Creek Capital Management that I thought you'd enjoy. Every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every bottle of fine wine, every collectible car, every piece of real estate, every private business, every everything, everything of value in the world will eventually be a token. And people were sniggering and, and like, yeah, whatever. And and now we know it's true, right? Y'all are, are proof, positive, the talent migration into this space that has recognized that this adoption of technology, this evolution, it's not a revolution, it's an evolution of technology that everything of value will be a token on a blockchain. Not a coin, not a thing. It's literally a line item on a public ledger. Everything of value will be that. And every transaction of value will happen in digital assets. You all appreciate, but most people still don't appreciate because 83% of the world in which I came from, the institutional world, uh, pensions, endowments, and I still have zero exposure. Yeah, 83% have zero. So that's my hashtag, get on zero. They've got more that. They've got yeah. that. No, I mean in crypto, they're yeah, they broadly. Just, right. Just zero. And and it's it's this, this realization that, look, the internet busted the monopoly of information control. Information was controlled by governments. It used to be controlled by the church. It was controlled by governments and government state-owned media and state-influenced media. And that was busted wide open. And commerce was bigger than media. And that got disrupted by the mobile net. Well, the truth net, I used to call it the trust net, but we're replacing trust with truth. So I like truth net better. And the truth net takes value and banking and financial services and derivatives, which are orders of magnitude bigger than commerce. I mean, as big as Amazon is, it's tiny compared to global financial services. I mean, tiny, because that's not true. I'm like, just do the math. It's, and this disruption that's going to occur and is occurring isn't gonna stop. No matter what the price of Bitcoin is, no matter what happens to Ethereum after the merge, before, who gives a hell? It, it's it's how is the network continuing to grow? How many users? How many new companies are being formed? How many augmentations of an old? Because there's two ways to, to innovate. You can be a big E entrepreneur. You can invent something new. Mark Andreessen creates the browser, creates the internet. Okay, You can create little E entrepreneurs. You can take something new and make an old thing better. Abra Bank is a better way of doing financial services and others will emulate that. But that isn't big e entrepreneur. Banking is not new. Now, you're not supposed to call it a bank, right? Or actually, you guys are calling it a bank. So, um, But financial services in the digital age isn't different than financial services for thousands of years. It's just a better way from analog where we had to physically be present. So then they went to electronic, QCIPs, but QCIPs are stupid. We have pieces of paper in Dallas, Texas, that sit in file drawers that have electronic QCIPs related to them. That's 400 year old technology. We don't need the pieces of paper. Wipe out all of DTCC, which processes $1.8 quadrillion a year. That is a large number, okay? And it's owned by the banks, shocking, I know. And they're really happy that it exists because it's like a mutual insurance company. They get paid. So that will all move to digital. And when it does, it will create massive wealth. The greatest wealth creation opportunity I'm going to see in my lifetime, for sure. Every technology follows an S-curve. This one is perfect. If you look at it mapped to the internet, it's almost perfect. We're in 1997, eight. And, and I remember being sitting in Notre Dame, we were investing in eBay and our board was like, are you an idiot? That's a garage sale company. Like, no, it's bigger than a garage sale. Um, 96X, made, it made Benchmark One, their venture fund was a 96X. The fund was 96X, forget the deal. The fund was 96X. Uh, Google, right? Stupid name, 21st search engine, don't need it, but they weren't doing a search engine. They transformed the whole nature of information. You know that half the websites in the world are owned by Google? Half of the websites in the world are owned by Google. Because every time you type a question, if it's been if it's been asked before, it sends you to a website that has all the information. 
If it's a new question, they create a new website. That's why it's so fast. That's why it reads your mind as you're typing and it knows exactly where to send you. And that's what indexation is. Genius idea, pretty simple in hindsight. Wasn't simple at the time, but we turned half a million dollars into 200 million. And it just be a quad at Notre Dame called the Google Quad. And so it's these big types of in innovations that don't come along very often. They come along every 14 years. Why 14 years? Young people. Young people create everything new. Old people don't create new stuff because we're afraid. And young people don't know what they don't know. And before it was politically incorrect to talk about Bill Cosby, he, he had this funny record when I was growing up about this kid who could ride his bike anywhere. He'd ride up across the top of a, a swing set or on top of a fence. He'd do little circles on the ground, six inches off. And he never fell. First time he fell when someone told him about gravity. And so young people invent new things and we're in that stage. So 54 mainframe, 68 microchip, 82 personal computer, 96 internet, 2010 mobile net, 2024 to still coming truth net. And the truth net will transform every item of value in the world into a medium exchange. And so I had a conversation this morning with the ledger guys, someone is going to figure out how we can transact value seamlessly together in a secure way. And it's probably not going to be a web two phone. It's probably not. It's probably going to be a device created for web three. Bitcoin is up exactly what it should be from the beginning of the creation of money. That. But what happened was price does not equal value. The value of the Bitcoin network is determinable to a very high degree of certainty using Metcalfe's law, right? Number of participants, transaction size, all of that is determinable. 100%. What happened was stupidity. Dumb people borrowing too much money and levering up Bitcoin and pushing the price, someone's called manipulation, to levels that exceeded the value. And anytime that happened, that's true today. Stocks today are overvalued relative to their value. They're in the 90 third percentile. They've only been more expensive, 7% of all of history. Today, Bitcoin is in the two and a half percentile cheap to its history. Um, history is not kind uh, for these environments. Uh, there's a long-term cycle, 90 years. Uh, if you go back to 1840, there, there was no central bank. The, the banks constricted liquidity we went on something called the free banking era, total disaster for 25 years. Um, and bottom line is, is we had a depression. 90 years later, in 1929, 1930, uh, Smoot and Hawley did one of the dumbest things ever, uh, put tariffs on and we contracted liquidity into a slowing economy, turned a garden variety recession into the Great Depression. So here we are 90 years later uh, in the 2020s and we are tightening liquidity into a slowing economy and we already did the stupid tariff stuff. So we are uh, on the verge of what I believe will be another depression, not even recession. Now, it doesn't have to go that way. By committing ourselves to the future and to development of this technological evolution and being part of, of this new community that Dan's talking about, look, I say this all the time, I'm having more fun today than I've had in my entire career. And I love my career. I love working for endowments. I love building a little asset management business, but I love hanging out with y'all. The, the energy, the enthusiasm, the passion, the talent is like nothing I've ever seen. And I've been around a long time and seen a lot of, of these movements, but this is what it's all about. So 